Okay, we ran through the 2023 predictions, whether they held out locally. Let's move quickly to your picks for 2023 this year. What did you pick as your winner this year locally? As I said earlier in the first block, India Kincannon held up, and I picked her again. She earned it, and uh, I thought she did really well. Um, and, and I also think uh, the, the winner, the uh, the gentleman that won the city judge race, uh, Tyler Cavanis, you know, Tyler Cavanis uh, really uh, defeating a 36-year incumbent, uh, maybe 37, uh, pretty remarkable. Susan, your winner at the local level. My winner was the Democrat Party. They, well, uh, thank you. you well, know, I, I admit it when it happens that they won Burns almost every. Day. It hurts, but they won almost every race. Um, and and then I would give a little bit of a shout out to Amelia Parker again. We talked about her, mm. but you know she ran an incredible race. She had a great. There were three folks running, really good candidates right. running in that race, and she won 60-40. So a shout out to her for doing what she needed to do. Let's the go Democrats to your, have done well. Let's go to your loser at the local level. My loser <laughs> are the citizens of Knox County because of the voter turnout. We spent five hundred thousand dollars on a race that saw. 15,000 people or so vote and that's really pathetic um, it's a lot of money to spend on a race where you only had 15,000 people turn out we've got to do something about it I'd love to see us move city races to county commission races the same you know and, and even over years don't think it's gonna happen but it would be helpful I think Don your loser a little more obscure but very very important and very tragic Richard Bean mm -hmm. we didn't think we'd have to talk about the bean machine again <laughs> about from about 10 years ago but uh, ProPublica published a, a scathing article about the conditions at the Knox County Juvenile Detention Center Center. And I don't think this story is going to die off this year. I think it's going to grow. And the conditions and the things that some of those children are subjected to, it's going to be something to look for. It's already on a national radar, and I think it's going to get worse. In, in transparency, John, they did invite us in to see the juvenile center right. after that story. And we immediately asked, okay, we want to come over and talk to you about it, and we want to look at the place. And they did that. And uh, they don't agree with that story, as you might have predicted, and they think the national reporter maybe kind of buffed and polished a little bit in spots that appealed to them for their thesis. We'll see. I mean, I think the state says it's going to be looking more into it. I know the Democrats in the state say lawmakers want to look further into not just the Bean Center, but uh, how juveniles are held. This is a, this is a problem statewide, yeah. but uh, I guess some of the cavalier quotes that were quoted in there from Richard Bean, who I've considered a friend over the years, uh, were shocking to all of us. Susan, your issue locally of the year. Oh, it's got to be the price of housing. You can't find a place to rent or buy, and if you find it, it's ridiculously priced. The price of rent has gone up dramatically in Knox County and the city over the past year, and of course the mortgage rates are high, and so finding housing is incredibly difficult. Don, your issue. Uh, related to that homelessness, uh, it's only getting worse, it's getting more evident. As someone who spends the majority of his time downtown, you know, every year it seems to be just a little bit worse, and, and we've got to get our hands around this problem because it is a major problem okay let's move to the state level quickly and, and we'll get those uh, we'll talk about your predictions in a minute for 2023 but Susan who did you pick as your winner across the state this year my winner will surprise you but it's representative Gloria Johnson she managed to not get expelled when her two colleagues did she got invited to the White House she's been on national talk shows and now she's running for the US Senate so um, I got to give props to Glory for being at the right place at the right time. Don, your winner at the state level. Uh, similar Tennessee three, all three of them. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I don't think that uh, the fact uh, th there's some terrible racial overtones about, uh, as we call them, the two Justins getting expelled and not the the white woman from Knox County. Um, I know there were some fine gradients given by uh, Republican legislatures for justifying why Gloria did not get expelled, but all three of those uh, legislators rose in political political stock and, and prominence and I, I think you're going to see one or more of them uh, play on a bigger state and even a national level uh, in the future. They, that, that was a gift from the Republican uh, House yes, leadership. I, yes, we could was. not have <laughs> asked for something more and you know Susan mentioned expelled. They both were put back in the legislature by their elected bodies uh, within Quickly. weeks. Yes. You're a loser at the state level. Uh, my, oh that one was so easy for me. It was frightening. Tim Burchett. Uh, you know Tim governed uh, as county 
county mayor uh, fairly moderately, conservatively, but moderately. He has just gone off the rails into Matt Gates land in Congress. He's one of the eight that voted off uh, Kevin McCarthy. Being practical about it, he has, he has lost uh, the base of his Republican moneyed support, different than his Republican voters, because I don't disagree what Susan's going to say. He's probably going to win again, or he may win again, but uh, some of the old head Republicans that give a lot of money in this town, uh, and some that are vocal, and I'll call him out, Victor Ash, uh, he's been writing about him every week in his column, and, and there are some people really looking to do harm to his political future. You're a loser statewide, Susan, in 2023. Well, this one is tough for me, because I'm pro-life, but I think the women of Tennessee uh, have lost a lot in the state from some of the legislation that's passed. Um, restricting abortion, they don't, still don't have clear rights to uh, an abortion if your life is in danger or if, you, if there's been a rape or incest. And I think that has become a very, very hot issue. Um, against the Republican Party, and I think we're going to see national, a lot of national pushback because of that. Your issue? Uh, my issue is guns. Uh, we saw the Covenant shooting in um, the spring, and we had a special session uh, to deal with uh, guns, but nothing really happened. Yeah, it was, and, it was uh, pointless. So yeah, I yeah, think it's been... It's, window it's dressing big, at best. And there, and there are just voices of Tennessee that are for gun safety are are going to be heard next year. Don, quickly, your issue of 2023. Not too, too dissimilar from Susan. Uh, issues regarding uh, personal liberty, not just guns, but guns, women's reproductive rights, medical uh, uh, insurance and care for those that can't afford it, uh, LGBTQ issues. Um, they are all going by the wayside in the state, and it really, really is difficult and tragic to watch. All right, we're going to take a quick break on Inside Tennessee, back with more context and perspective. Mm -hmm. Who were they predicted to be at the state level? We're going to run through that quickly as we move on to the national level as well on this Inside Tennessee.